tetrahedral void. Let's see about that. All right, people. So, in the tetrahedral void, we have something like this, right? So, what essentially becomes important to us that, you know, if you name, uh, let's say, uh, this as 1, 2, and 3, and 4, you realize that not only that, you know, 1, 2, 3, not only that 1, 2, 3 are, you know, in contact with each other, 1 with 2, 2 with 3, 3, 1, 1, but also that, you know, when this 4 will be placed on top, the 4 and 3, the 4 and 1, the 4 and 2 will also be in touch with each other, right? And that is one relation that we are going to utilize. Also notice that the, as you can see over here, the coordination number of the particle or the impurity being a resident of the void becomes equals to four, right? The four particles will be surrounding it being its nearest neighbor, making them the coordination number. All right, people. So let's begin. We have something like this over here, right? Okay, tetrahedron. Now, also, also, before we move on to the mathematical part, right, let's let's have a look at a great animation over here, right? Just what I'm telling you, you'll realize. See, they are in touch with each other. Do you see what I'm trying to tell you? Also, they're further color the void inside, you know, to further, further show you the benefits and all. Okay, crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, do you see over here? Okay, now let's let's represent them by their center of masses. And this is what we get. Okay, people, so do you realize that, you know, how we can use it over here? Do you understand that each of the sphere, the yellow one is of radius capital R. So some of the edge lengths will become equal to 2R directly. And ultimately, you know, we have something like this. We have something like this. Actually, if you realize you must have, you know, a, 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 B, a, a yellow sphere over here, a yellow sphere over here, right? Okay, and they will be in touch with each other. So yeah, let's let's be like this. Right? We have another this one over here, another this one over here. And at the center somewhere you have a void. Right? At the center somewhere you have a void. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Now the point is, having said that, what happens is that, you know, this distance turns out to be equals to R plus R. Get it? Right? Okay. And the point is, if I take this triangle, which triangle am I talking about? O. A and B, right? So this triangle am I talking about? O, A and B. This is what I'm talking about. So in this triangle, the base obviously turns out to be 2R. How do we get the 2R over here, people? What did we do to get 2R? Well, we connected A and B with each other. So we got 2R over there. Then what did we do? Then we took that, you know, uh, said that, you know what, either of these, either of these, lengths OA or OB become equals to R plus R, right? Small R plus capital R. And either of these two angles, right? They turn out to be basically what? They turn out to be 109, approximately 0.48 degrees divided by two, right? So that turns out to be what? Appro approximately, you know, uh, 54.6 or 54.4, something like that. Something like that on, on you know, that, that, uh, uh, that, that range, right? Now, obviously, I don't want you to remember the value of sine of 54 degree, 44 minutes. No, I don't want you to remember that. No, no, no. Right? What they have done here, then again, is that, you know, they have used the sine angle, right? Having said that, what it happens, it becomes equals to perpendicular divided by hypotenuse, right? Which is basically this length. So that turns out to be capital R divided by small r plus capital R. Right, and once that part is clear to you, it is nothing but solving, right? So don't, don't, uh, you don't have to remember the value of sine this and that, right? All you have to remember is that the end result looks something like this, right? Small r by capital R is equals to 0 0.225, right? Remember this, 